Hello, I'm Chris Godber. Welcome to Chris Godber Art. Uh, this is a channel where I just put my artwork up, put art, talk about art, discuss art, um, and that really. So like and subscribe if any of that sounds interesting. So uh, last video did seem to be seem to have quite a few views and seem to generate some uh, interest was masculinity in art. So I thought I'd continue on in that vein. Um, talking about well, this one's not really going to centre around masculinity too much. It's just going to centre around uh, um, artists who explored identity and what that means in their work, pretty much. So obviously that's quite broad. I mean, you could you could identity is big subject. It's everyone has a identity. I guess it, uh, how much that actually affects one's you know actual artistic practice varies very much to artists but I'm going to give a few examples of talk about a few um, artists whose identity was uh, you know a big important part of the work I might also talk a bit about my own work and how it my my own identity comes into my painting practice too so obviously as I was exploring masculinity last time I thought I'd explore um, femininity and um, had a, a f example of a modern artist explored that in their work. That's Frida Kahlo, which is uh, potentially a, quite an obvious example, but she is worth exploring because she's definitely a very popular artist in terms of an artist who explored identity and shifting notions of identity. In today's la um, language, she'd be considered non-binary, I think, really. She's a bisexual um, Mexican painter. And her work deals very is very much sort of centered around her own experience navigating her, what at the time would have been a quite radical identity in, uh, in Mexico. So, and her, a lot of her work explored her own uh, Pain and suffering, you know, as, as and the struggles that she encountered, uh, openly living with that identity, base of you know being basically um, androgynous in one way or the other. Um, I don't. Think, uh, I mean, obviously, she can't speak for herself, but she would have been. She she was definitely androgynous on some level. So she's a very interesting artist to look into. Uh, I'll put a few pictures up of some famous works. She was. Married to Diego Riviera, who was a Mexican muralist as well, very incredible artist in his own right. Um, who actually painted one of my. I've never seen this mural in person, unfortunately, but Man at the Center uh, in the, Man at the Center of the Universe, or something it's called, uh, which is an incredible mural. There's a big, there's an interesting story behind it as well. So that was. That mural was actually destroyed because the Rockefellers commissioned him to do this mural, but because it included De both Frida Kahlo and uh, Diego Rivera were communists, active communists in the Communist Party of Mexico, and uh, but Diego Rivera was commissioned by the Rockefellers to do a mural. The mural was destroyed because they didn't like the fact that he put a Lenin, you know, in it because to the time it was like it's considered provocative, I suppose. Um, they had a very uh, tumultuous relationship for sure. I think they did stay together though for uh, for uh, the duration of their lives. They have, I guess, a open relationship of, of sorts. Now, this is, I actually did get uh, a um, comment about. I did make a comment on polyamory and Picasso, and that was um, it was like, like I said it was sort of like a half-formed, half. But to the commenter, it was like a sort of half-baked. Uh, was like thought really. I didn't really um, think about what I was saying. Uh, I do think, like on consideration, if you if you're not sure what I'm talking about, then just view the other video. I'll link it below. Uh, I was just, yeah, I don't know, just basically. I think it was a bit half baked. The idea I was trying to come up with to say that you know is it a double standard sort of thing. But at the end of the day, like human relationships, like, you know, whatever, like have whatever relationship works. For you, isn't it really? Like some people are naturally monogamous, some people are polyamorous. It's not that 
interesting, really good one in terms of like the subject of this video. Um, so, uh, I did want to talk a bit about Oscar Kokoschka as well, I think, uh, because he there was a very famous painting he did called uh, Bride of the Wind, I think it, I believe it's called, and or the Tempest, sorry, the Tempest. I think it's called. I think it's, it's two titles, which is in I think is in Vienna, probably. But, uh, but that's a painting based on a failed relationship he had with a, a much older woman called Alma. Um, she was like a society woman of Vienna at the time. Dated a lot of dated and was in relationships with a lot of musicians, artists, etc. Now he had a sort of like failed relationship with her, and he painted that painting, and they, they, their relationship ended not long after. I'll put an image of it up. It's one of my favorite expressionist paintings, actually. Um, Kokoschka was interesting. He, had, I think, he shaved his head. I think often it's thought that he just shaved his head and quite had like quite like a hard image, you know. Like he was, he was a. Uh, he was quite um, eccentric. Like when he, he, and, he and Alma broke up, he actually made a doll of her, and he and, he and his friends beat this doll up, which is sort of like painter's voodoo, isn't it? In a way, it's just like, oh, I, I don't like my ex, so therefore I'm gonna make a doll and be a winner, whatever. It's better than actually, to be fair to him, it's better than actually doing that in real life. You know, some some people really do do that shit, and that's terrible. You know, domestic abuse and stuff. Bastards. So it's it's probably more, you know. Overall, it's probably better to creatively release some frustration against an ex as opposed to, uh, you know, actually physically abusing them or hitting them or whatever. Anyway, that's that's quite a heavy subject. Uh, I think I'll talk. So I've talked about now two different artists, painters who've explored identity. I'll talk a bit more about my. Uh, how identity but relates to my work as well, I suppose. No, there will be some pictures coming up as well, just as I'm talking. So, my identity is obviously uh, no, I'm white for a start. Um, I'm economically, I suppose, a middle class, really. I mean, recording this video in a conservatory, for example. Um, sexuality wise, I mean, pansexual really, to be honest. Not that I, I don't fixate on that that much, but it is my, that, that, that is my sexuality, basically. Um, how does that express itself in my work? Uh, I explore it through mythology really, symbology, symbols, um, I try and analyse that identity through um, varying through history, through the lens of history, through the lens of uh, psychology, through the lens of mythology, myth, images, symbology. So I'll put a few images on screen that will show sort of what I mean. Uh, also how I view other people I, I do know, I know in real life do come into my work. Uh, it's not always consciously that they come into my work, it can often be unconscious. Unconsciously that they, uh, people in my life enter my paintings. Right? I, don't, I don't always go into a painting with a plan of like, I'm gonna paint this person or this person. Um, I think also because I have, uh, have certain mental health issues which um, have probably change the way that I perceive uh, the world sometimes or like I think sometimes um, because I work from unconscious a lot I'm not uh, I'll see different things in the painting sometimes sometimes I'll see how oh, that's that's like a I don't know it's like sometimes faces will pop up and then I'll realize that's sort of like this person or that person or this person but then it, it, it I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. Anyway, I'll wrap this video up here. I'm not going to make it too long. Uh, it's interesting. I'll probably do another bunch of videos exploring the question further. In terms of, like, in general, I don't think it's that useful to hyperfixate on identity. It is something that is important, obviously. And I think for, there are certain... Um, 
that is obviously easy for me to say because I'm white, middle class and all that, but you know, I'm also disabled in the sense I'm bipolar and my tickets are affected with that. That's, that gives you a different experience to the world from other people, which also include normal people, I suppose. Uh, but then, obviously there are people who have, in terms of like privilege, I guess, have a much, uh, they have a different set of problems to deal with, so I always have to bear that in mind, right? Like, I'm, if I was black and brought up in the very low economic environment, then I'm going to have a different uh, experience of the world when I enter it, right? I can never know what that's like, same as for me, same for being a woman, I can never know what that's like, I'm never going to have a child, I'm never going to experience or know what that world is like on any level, so you have to always consider that, I think it's part of the thing for individuals being able to uh, have empathy, I guess, really. Struggles and the difficulties, and again, the hyperfixation on identity when you take it to the extreme is extremely terrible. Like, you know, people are hyperfixated on like, the cultural identity, or uh, I'm white, you know, the extreme end that you get like white power ideas, and you know, that's a huge, 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 terrible people, obviously. I'd like to hope that you can, those people will be deprogrammed from their sort of fixations. Anyway, 